Anambra governorship elections finally come to an end as INEC declares Saludo winner of the exercise. And Cross River South stakeholders demand governorship slot. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. Chukuma Solodu Solodo Soludo <laughs> of APGA having satisfied the requirements of the law is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Wow. This is dated Dated today, 10th November 2021, and is signed by me, the returning officer. Well, that's the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, there declaring Chukuma Soludo, the All Progressive Congress, uh, All Progressive Grand Alliance, uh, APCA winner of the November 6 governorship elections in Anambra State. Now, Mr. Saludo polled a total of 112,229 votes to defeat his closest rival, Valentine Ozibu, of the People's Democratic Party, who scored 53,807 to emerge second. Now, Andy Ubao of the All Progressive Congress candidate got a total of 43,285 votes to emerge in third position. Well, joining me to discuss this uh, is Program Manager Elections Yaga Africa, Paul James, National Publicity Secretary Ohane Zindibu, Alex Ogbonna, and Political Analyst Biodum Shomi. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Great. I'm Thank going to start you. with Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Paul, because you uh, obviously, as Yaga, had been monitoring the elections from start to finish uh, in terms of security, uh, INEC, voters, literally everything. Um, and I, I did speak to somebody from Yaga yesterday. Uh, he spoke to us about voter turnout and, you know, um, um, the, the fact that uh, insecurity uh, was not necessarily an issue except for uh, the case in Ihiala. But as Yaga, um, what, what, what um, did you deduce from this election? Some people would say they applaud, you know, the Anambarians for coming out even uh, amidst all of the fear and you know all, all the propaganda on social media and in, including the hysteria on you know the traditional media um, everything went out uh, went on smoothly I was there in the field apparently um, I did not experience anything um, you know in terms of violence but for you what was your takeaway from Anambra um, especially for elections that um, are to come I think you have captured it all uh, for me, the biggest takeaway is of the people. The people were the winners from this election that despite the, the challenges, they braved the odds and then they came out and engaged the process. This was an election that happened under a very tense atmosphere and then also an election that happened under a lot of uncertainties. If you go back from August the 9th this year when the sit-at-home order started in the, in the Southeast, it somehow impacted uh, engagement by stakeholders and as well also voter education activities. Voter education for Anambra was all-time low, lower than what they had experienced in previous election. And we had feared that based on what we were seeing in the build-up to the election, that it was going to affect turnout because not so much has been done to encourage people to participate in the process. And uh, likely also not the fault of the stakeholders, but like I said, because of those uncertainties. Now, if you look at also the other, other elements that uh, played out in the build-up to the election, there was a voter registration activity by INEC that did happen. For five consecutive Mondays, the people of Anambra lost the chance to participate in this process because of the sit-at-home order. Now, in September, precisely between September 7th and September 11th, and they did the display claims and objection. Also because of this uncertainty, not very many people came out to engage the display claims and objection process. 
But then we went to the election. We thought Anambra could change the narrative, especially based on what we have seen in the past. But sadly, this is where we are. Turnout all time low in the history of state elections in Nigeria. The final results are declared by ANEC indicated that Anambra turnout is only 10.27%. Now, if you recall in 2014, Tonat was under 21%, and we were crying then that, wow, Anambra uh, Tonat. If you look at also engagement in state election in Anambra, it has always been low compared with national election. For the national election, the Tonat in Anambra in 2019 was 26%. So you begin to wonder whether or not people are really taking the election or the process that is even closer to them as serious as it should. But then, I said, given the uncertainties, we need to also commend those that braved the odds and came out to engage the process. For the most colony that we visited, people were civil, people operated, uh, I mean, engaged the election in a very peaceful and cordial manner, and I think they deserve that credit. What do you think, quickly, because I'm going to go to the other guest, um, what do you think that needs to be done? Because if there's this continuous um, low voter turnout and you are you're unable to tell if the people are not interested in you know the process or the people are interested but there might be just certain roadblocks that are causing this so as Yaga have you done some form of investigative studies or um, you know take a poll of sorts to find out what the people need for them to be able to come out en masse to cast their votes I think on the part of the people uh, People are interested, based on also what we have seen in the process. People are beginning to understand the power of their vote. If you recall, there was a video going around, I think from a Benebe community, about women that rejected uh, that rejected inducement in the election. And they said, no, we're going to vote for the person that we wanted. And that, for me, sent a very strong uh, message to the, the political distractors and also show us the power of the people. Now, what remains is uh, the need for early engagement. Most times we allow this engagement, we make this engagement episodic. They are done very close to the election, and that was why the Anambra engagement was impacted, like I said, by the uncertainties. If this has started some four years ago, if we begin to be an ele election for the prism, a prism of uh, a process, not an event, and we start early engagement, it will help to drive up this. Now, Anambra has 2.5 million registered voters, about 1.7 collected that PVC, and under 250 engage the process. That is very low. Only a few people determine who becomes the governor of uh, the state. If you look at it from the moral point, others will not even have a say. They don't have the moral right to question whatever happens in that process. So it's to begin to conscientize them to understand this value. Now, there are issues also, cases of vote buying, for instance, for as low as 2,000 Naira. Now, 2,000, put it by four years, 500 Naira every year. If you go back to this voter and educate the voter to say, this money you are, that you are collecting from politician will stunt your development. It will stunt the development of the state because this politician will want to recoup their money before they begin to talk about state development. Now, compare that also with minimum wage. How much is minimum wage? 18,000. Do that by four years and you see how much that will amount to. So when you begin to uh, ingrain this in their consciousness to understand the value of one vote, perhaps will change the narrative of uh, how they engage the process going forward. Okay. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Mr. Kona. Um, most of us watched um, the, um, the, the first speech from uh, Mr. Soludo when he was um, announced as governor-elect. Uh, I did watch some excerpts from his conversation today on another TV station. Um, he said he was going to engage um, everybody across board. He, mm -hmm. he actually said that um, the PDP man had reached out to him to congratulate him, and he was open to... Um, you know, welcoming everybody on board. He even talked about the transition committee. Uh, he said um, when he was on the receiving side, when the last time he ran for governorship and lost, he reached out to, you know, the people who won and congratulated, uh, you know, the person. Um, that that he, he holds nothing against them and that all that he looks forward to is preparation to take Anambra to a new level. So let's look at the person of Charles Saludo and what Anambra stands to gain from him. And, and um, you know, he's, a lot of us know him as the former CBN governor. But other than that, what do you think as a person, now that he's emerged the governor, 
uh, that we should be looking forward to from him? Well, some of us have worked uh, closely with uh, Professor Saludo. You know, her name is Ndibu. I work very closely with him. We discovered he's a man as an intellectual in the first place. He's broad-minded. He has a character comeliness. He has a persuasive way of convincing people, you know, to let people come close to what he wants. Um, when he said he work uh, with those who call all people that contested the election with him, that is a demonstration of large hearts. And I'm very much happy uh, he said so. And I'm so optimistic that he will do so. Uh, you will understand that, uh, like some of my friends were talking about uh, voter turnout and that party. Well, the people that vote is just the, that is the representativeness of Anambra. Even if all the Anambra people have come home to vote, it would have the same result would have been obtained. Of course, you want to know the strength of Anambra in and outside outside the um, Anambra. Say, go to uh, Lagos, go to Abuja, go to all parts of the world. You will see a lot of Anambra and Ambrians all over. And because of the CG environment created in uh, Southeast and Anambra, some of them we are not very much ready to come home because of that. Uh, some of them registered but traveled away or one way or the other. But all the same, that's a representativeness of uh, Anambra spirit, mm. what you saw there. But you know, uh, Anambra, they are looking at the social economics of Anambra State with Soludo. With Soludo, as an economist and somebody who has got uh, a pedigree of central bank and banking industry, they're looking at somebody who will be able to a turn around manager, somebody that will be able to bring about desired change in the um, entrepreneurship uh, capacity of Anambra people. And uh, that is part of the reason why he enjoyed the solidarity and support. So, like I uh, say, we're going forward. Uh, we see Soluda as somebody who will reinforce the up gas it is. He has a way of mobilizing and galvanizing the people uh, towards his direction. And you will also discover that there are a lot of Yubu elements who have an uh, interest in Apaga because of uh, a foundation led by Ujuku. They will also coagulate around him and uh, things like that. So uh, we are very certain that there will be a difference with Soludo's emergence as the governor of uh, Anambra State. Mm. I'm also happy he is prepared to work with them. Broad-minded, large-hearted, he's a gentleman. And there will be a difference. I'm going to go to I'm going to go to um, show me. Um, let's put him side by side all his predecessors. Um, what sets um, Chukuma Soludo as apart from all of these people, including Governor Obiano in himself? Um, uh, it's it's interesting that uh, many have said many pundits have said that there was a gentleman's agreement between Governor Obiano and and Soludo and some other people who participated in this election, um, and that he chose. Um, you know, Soludo for a certain reason. Uh, um, I, I, I listened to Soludo himself uh, say that his relationship with the governor is pretty amazing and that they bonded together, that the governor has supported him over time and has been very sincere with him. Uh, and he said that the governor had told him over and over again that he wanted him, Soludo, to succeed him. But let's see um, the difference between Soludo and every other governor that has um, been, uh, that's Governor Nambra State. Well, um, the, in the case of Soludo, Soludo is a technocrat, an academician, a man who has excelled both um, in academics and also in practical economic um, implementation. Um, he was not only a past governor of the Central Bank, he has served two different presidents, including the current president, um, Buhari, um, who is served as um, part of the economic advisory team. So no doubt, Soludo is a very well-experienced um, person who um, has been able to uh, excel himself and deliver. In the case of Anambra, it's a totally different uh, thing completely. Uh, when you look at the way Anambra functions um, over the years and how it's functioning currently, uh, the state is faced with so many challenges. You have the issue of um, erosion, you have um, other issues uh, you know, in relation to uh, economic development, the industrialization of the state. Um, you know, so many environmental problems. And uh, coupled with that is the, uh, the density, you no know, population density compared to land mass. Um, you have all these problems in Anambra. Not many governors 
has been able to make any difference to that state. These are challenges which Soludo is bound to face, and he has to um, try and make a difference to them. If he's able to make a difference and impact on all those issues, for instance, um, on educational development of the state, uh, things that will affect the lives of ordinary people. Um, the cost of constructing roads in Anambra is huge because of erosion. If he's able to resolve all that and find a means of financing those projects, which will be his cost spread, then Soludo will have achieved a lot. But um, apart from Peter Obi, I have my reservation whether there is any of those um, um, former governors, who, including the current governor, Willie Ubiano, who we can say um, there was so much expectation, you know, from them uh, when they got elected. In the case of Soludo, so much expectation is there. Many people thought it's going to turn uh, an Ambra into El Dorado. It's going to turn it into a Dubai. I don't think so. Uh, they think it's going to make an Ambra very prosperous. I don't think so. Hmm. Because the reality is, where will he get the resources to implement all this? But this it's is someone who's run the central do. bank for years. Um, if there be anybody better to answer that question or to be able to um, know where no. to get the money, it would be Saludo. Or am I mistaken? No, no. No, no. What, what Saludo is likely going to do? Because we are faced with an economy which is mono economy, where the mainstay of the economy still remains all. Oil is subject to um, international market um, fluctuations in prices. And because of that, you are not able to plan on a sustainable basis on how to develop the state and, um, you know, realistically. The problem you have is that Soludo is likely going to tap into other things. For instance, international finance um, um, corporation. They are not likely going to release money to an Ambra state just like that, without preconditions. He's probably going to look at public-private um, partnership. You know, in an Ambra state, he will be looking at financing it through some development assistance from international agencies. Yes, it will make a difference. Yes, he has a cloud. Yes, he's able to convince them. Yes, international finance um, uh, sectors are likely going to try and support him. But there's a limit to what they can do. Because don't forget that the world is faced with post-COVID challenges also. So therefore, we should not over-build uh, our expectations from um, Soludo. Otherwise, uh, we will not be able to assess him fairly at the end of the day. Great. It's important to caution people now so that we understand the stark economic realities because governments are being forced to devalue Naira, not because of economic forces or market forces, but simply because they need more Naira you know, to pay salaries and to run government simply because of dwindling production of oil. So yeah. this is the reality which Soludo will face. But then he will still perform a lot better than many of his um, uh, governors that have ruled um, a number of states. Interesting. Uh, uh, James, I'm going to come to you, but let me go back to um, Ogona. Um, He's saying that um, he might not necessarily do, I mean, because there's a lot on his plate, if you ask me. We're, we're still talking about the issue of security here, which also is the elephant in the room in Anambra. It has to be addressed one way or the other. Um, he, but then, uh, like he said, that um, other governors were not as great as Peter Obi. Um, that anyone that should be put at par with uh, Saludo would be probably be Peter Obi. Uh, but then we also have a governor, Willie Obiano, who... Um, has excelled in many capacities before he, he even became governor. Um, and there were so many, you know, high hopes for him. Uh, and now Mr. Shomu is saying that, you know, he's not necessarily been able to scratch the surface. Would it be that easy for Saludo uh, if it's been this difficult for um, Obiano to, in the same way, um, scratch the surface or do something really outstanding for a number of people? Well, uh, the fact remains, you cannot limit the brain power of uh, an intellectual such as uh, Saludo. Uh, it is difficult to limit the brain power of what uh, his intellect can do. Uh, just like while he was in gov so governor of the central bank, you see what he was able to do within a very short time, that bank consolidation and the rest of them. So it is expected that uh, uh, he will add a lot of value to the Anambra social economics. You see, we, there's one thing in Igbo land. Uh, to mobilize them 
towards a direct there are a lot of billionaires in Anambra State. What is important is to galvanize and mobilize them towards a direction. When they see vision in you, see transparency in you, see energy in you, they see that you have the capacity to carry them along. You will see them coming on board. For example, many universities in Anambra State today look at the university teaching hospital in Newi, go to Nandazikyo University, or okay, many other projects. They are sponsored by individuals in Anambra State. So there is a way you can even governize the billionaires in Anambra and things will be working without uh, looking at the money economy like my friend is talking about. So the new role, apart from being an intellectual, he has a persuasive way of bringing people to his side and uh, governizing the people to uh, move the same direction with him. So um, I don't want to talk about other governors before, but one thing that is clear is that Choludo has ideas. Choludo has a background of uh, uh, intellect, has a background of initiativeness, and always bring about desired change. So mm -hmm. I'm very optimistic that the difference will be very, very clear. Well, he's also Thank talked about you know, a coalition government of sorts. He's talking about bringing other people on board. I'd like to quote him directly from what he spoke on this morning. He said, when it comes to execution, of these ideas we need um, perspectives from other people so that we can serve the people better he said i'm looking to add value everyone who's interested in helping solve the problems of our number of people is welcome but um could we be also get putting too much on the governor elect's plate knowing that again i'm going to going back to governor willie obiano there were very high hopes and expectations and those expectations are seemingly dashed. Should we also not be raising the hopes of an or, or rather, should we just be watching to see how he builds on uh, what his predecessor has started? Yeah, um, it's just the same thing I was saying. I believe to um, relate with people, I believe to govern the people, I believe to harmonize various interests. That's what, what, what he's trying to do. You're trying to harmonize the diverse interests in Anambra to give it direction and momentum. So by to bring in, to bring in all the candidates that contest the election, it's just a good beginning. Like I said, the Anambra economy, they don't really depend on what will come from government. It's not like that in Anambra State. In Anambra, you'll see a lot of people whose interest in government is the extent government can pro, pro, uh, provide security to lives and, proper, and their property. But not what they will gain from government, what they will, not what they will do for the government. So what I try to say is that in Anambra, I have a lot of billionaires, I have a lot of rich people. What is important is to harmonize, to galvanize them, to give it a direction, to give them a direction. And they are, the moment they are convinced of where you are going and their vision, they will follow you. Uh, we are very optimistic. I haven't worked with Zorudo for a very long time. There will be a dramatic change. Great. That's what I'm saying. Paul, um, Paul, I, I'm most interested in that coalition again because uh, it's easy to say I want everyone on board, but then does everyone being on board uh, equal to a successful government? Because you see everybody has an idea of how they want the government to work out. Uh, seemingly, everybody says this is what the number that I want, but will it pose a problem of sorts? And has a coalition government ever worked in this country? bringing everybody from other parties to work with you, knowing that every political party has its own agenda? Well, I think for me, it depends also largely on the, the models for parandi of such government. But um, I've also always have been uh, of the school of thought that most times what the politicians engage us with in the build up to the election during their campaigns are what translate into their policies and when, when they get elected. And if you look at this, uh, those fantastic ideas that they all share, those fantastic views that they all share, I think it will be, it, it will be, uh, it will be to the interest of Anambra and by, by a large, by, to a large extent also, uh, the interest of the country that you harmonize and put these things uh, into one bucket. Um, uh, for him, extending the olive uh, branch is one thing, and accepting it is also the other one. So I think for me, it's for other political parties to begin to show that political maturity. They don't necessarily even have to wait for the, uh, the, the winning party to, to, to engage. If it is possible, they should even start off that process of engagement. Those beautiful ideas they have that they think can help to move the state forward, bring them on board. I was in Anna Bryan in 2013. I was in Anambra in 
2017 and again in this election. And I can tell you over time, if you look at the trajectory from 2013 to 2017 uh, to 2021 now, you will think you will see that. Uh, truly, a lot needs to be done, especially in terms of development for that state. That state is more like a window to the southeast. Nobody okay. talks about this southeast without making reference to Anambra. A mm. lot needs to be done, especially in terms of uh, building infrastructure for the state. So they need to uh, truly come together and work towards that. Okay, well, this is the measure you can take. I, I, it seems more like the governor, uh, the governor elect, does have his plate full, and all eyes will be on him to see uh, if he actually delivers. Um, the manager elections, Yaga Africa, Paul James, uh, National Publicity Secretary Ohanese Ndibo, Alex Obona, and uh, Biodo Shomi, political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you. thank you very much. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be looking at zoning in Cross River. Of course, they're talking about governorship returning to the southern senatorial districts. I'll be having very interesting guests in just a moment. <laughs>